Okay, in today's experiment we're going to be using a lot of fundamental techniques. This is really important for your development. We'll be using all the key skills for the semester. In fact, we'll be using all the key skills that come up again in your PRAC exam. You're going to be given an unknown diprotic acid. It's going to be your job to determine which one of these five diprotic acids you've been given. So I've given you the molecular formula, I've given you the molar mass of each one, but you'll be determining which one and you'll be doing it by titration. We'll remind you how to properly use a pipette, how to use a standard flask that you've again done once before. We're going to try and master titration, become even better at it. And we're going to pick up a new te technique. We're going to learn to weigh by difference using analytical balances, standard flask, glass neck funnels. So starting our experiment, we, we will take our unknown acid, we'll pop a clean dry weighing vial on the balance and we'll weigh in about 0.9 to a gram of our solid acid. Doesn't matter exactly what it is as long as it's somewhere in that window, somewhere between 0 0.9 and 1 grams. So there we are. Lucky this time. Once you've done that, pop the lid on your sample to make sure that you don't get anything unwanted getting in or out of the vial. And then we're going to take a trip to the analytical balance room. You need to take your results sheet, your sample, a pen, your standard flask, and a glass funnel. All that with you into the balance room, like so. Right, ready to weigh by difference, we zero the analytical balance with all the doors shut. Then carefully slide open a door, place your sample with the lid on in the balance and give it a moment for that mass to stabilize. Once it's stabilized, we record that mass accurately to four decimal places. So in this case, 17.6013 grams. Right, and back to the balance, you can pop your glass funnel in your standard flask take your sample out of the balance, we're going to deliver that directly into the standard flask. So make sure that it all goes in, into the funnel or into the standard flask. Doesn't matter if there's a small amount of residue left in the vial, but don't spill any on the bench or anywhere else. Make sure your balance is still zeroed, pop your sample vial back in there, and we're now going to weigh the sample vial minus the powder that you've delivered. So re-record that mass. 16.5796 grams, so straight into the result sheet. And of course that mass has gone into your 200 mil standard flask. We can now calculate the mass of solid that we've added. It will just be the difference between these two masses before and after you've added the solid. Go back out into the lab, make sure you use, use your distilled water bottle of course and wash every little bit of solid into that standard flask. There can be none left in the funnel. Be thorough, you've got plenty of water to play with, 200 mils before the flask is full. So rinse it very, very carefully. Then once you've done that, we make the standard flask up to the 200 mil mark by the normal method. Make sure you mix as you go, add a bit more distilled water to it, mix it further. And then as you get close to the top, you should be using your wash bottle. And then when you get really close like this, put your wash bottle away. It's time now to break out your dropper. Just go drop by drop until you're at the mark, till you have the bottom of the meniscus sitting on top of the line. Whatever you do, don't go over or you'll have to start again. Once you've done that, you can cap your standard flask and then we mix thoroughly by inversion. So we invert at least 40 times to ensure that the composition of the mixture is exactly the same all the way throughout. Transfer some of your acid mixture into a clean dry beaker. If you're not sure if the beaker is clean and dry, you can rinse it with a small amount of the solution that we're using and tip that down the sink. Then you're ready to transfer. And now we're going to use our bulb pipette to deliver 20 mil aliquots of our sample to several different conical flasks ready for analysis. When you're doing this again, don't forget all of your good habits with your bulb pipette. Ask your demonstrators if you're, if you're not sure. Remember that you need to draw solution after rinsing, draw solution until you are up past the mark on your pipette. After you're past the mark, you then clean off the outside with paper towel, like so. Once that's done, you then use a waste beaker, drain back down to the mark, pick this up so that your eye level with it so you can see what you're doing. And then once you've got it sitting perfectly on the line, bottom of the meniscus sitting on top of the line, you're then ready to do your delivery. Again, pin that tip against the side and we drain it down the side of our conical flask the whole time. When you get to the bottom, count that extra 15 seconds. There's still a small amount trailing down. 
Once you've got your sample, we're ready to add our indicator. So you can add a few drops of thymol blue indicator. Give it a bit of a mix to make sure the colour is consistent throughout your solution. Then it's time to prepare your burette. Fill it with sodium hydroxide. Be sure to remove the funnel. Check for air bubbles in the bottom of your burette at the tap. Take your initial reading to two decimal places from the bottom of the meniscus. Remember, two decimal places, not just five or zero. And then you're ready to start titrating. So you can pop your sample underneath and away you go. Now, for this indicator, for this sample, you've got a relatively friendly indicator. It'll start off with this peachy orange color, but pretty soon after you start, it'll change to a yellow color. The ideal we're looking for is this green here. And if you're titrating properly, it should be half a drop that makes you go from the yellow to the green. If you just miss the end point, or if you go way over, you'll end up with this blue color here. So the green is the ideal, or if you go just half a drop over and end up with a blue, we'll be okay. We'd like you to get multiple titers all within 0 0.05 mils, so three concordant titers. Once you've done that, show it to your demonstrator just so they can make sure they're happy with your results. And then you're ready to go. You can pack up for the day and you're finished. As far as your write-up goes, you're going to be using some stoichiometry. You're going to use your known sodium hydroxide solution to find out about your unknown diprotic acid. You should already know the molar ratio between the two, which means you'll be able to find the number of moles of the diprotic acid. And then, using the number of moles and the mass that you've weighed out, you should be able to determine the molar mass and therefore the identity of your unknown diprotic acid. Hope it works out well for you. Good luck!